have the privilege of introducing our first speaker. Uh, Mayor Suzanne Fuentes is also a leader in aerospace, and she's going to come up and take a few minutes and spend some time talking to us. Thank you, Suzanne. Welcome and thank everyone here for joining us today to celebrate El Segundo's long and storied history in Southern California as a leader in business and innovation for nearly 100 years. While our original focus was on heavy industry and defense, our business base now is dis transitioning to a more diverse and increasingly creative group of companies. Anything that can be imagined, designed, marketed, or sold can be found in El Segundo. As part of our efforts to attract new business, as well as retain and grow the businesses that are already here, we're proud to kick off a series of initiatives today to maintain El Segundo's position as the place where big ideas take off. We're keeping up our momentum by announcing El Segundo's 100 at 100 program. What is 100 at 100, you ask? It's El Segundo's commitment to bring 100 new businesses to town by 2007, which will be our city's 100th anniversary. Oh, 2017, what did I say? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. And how can we accomplish our goal? We have designed and are announcing a series of new marketing efforts to better communicate and share El Segundo's story with the world. El Segundo has a rich history in defense and aerospace, from Rosie the Riveter in World War II to the world's largest private satellite company, Direct TV. And if you used your navigation to get here today, thank El Segundo, where GPS was invented. Did you know that El Segundo has the second highest number of Fortune 500 companies in California? We're right behind San Francisco. That means we're ahead of Los Angeles, San Diego, Long Beach, and we're only five miles square. If you look out the windows here, you can see Chevron, Northrop Grumman, the world's largest toy manufacturer, Mattel, as well as LAX and the Pacific Ocean. We're also proud that the next generation of emblematic business leaders, including Carl Stortz, Quest Nutrition, Fuhu, Just Fab, Stamps.com, Millennium Space Systems, Beyond Meat, Rocket Fuel, and many other rapidly growing and innovative firms now call El Segundo home. The ongoing spirit of innovation and invention defines many of the new businesses that are arriving in El Segundo every day. El Segundo truly is the city where big ideas take off. You're going to become more familiar with El Segundo in the future via our exciting new website, elsegundobusiness.com, where people interested in finding out about our community, our business opportunities, business and real estate, can look and see. They can visit it 24-7, 365, and our beautiful banners will soon be going up over the next month, outlining our borders and providing identity and a sense of place and pride to our community. Additionally, we will be hosting a series of events with California's top commercial real estate brokers to make them aware of the opportunities and upcoming and present in El Segundo. Our story is impressive and we intend to share it with the world. We are the city where big ideas take off. And we believe by sharing our story, we will welcome 100 new businesses by 2017. El Segundo's success is shared with hundreds of incredible business partners, from startups in our Smoky Hollow Creative Industry District to the nation's leading defense and energy corporations. You may have heard about a local business that calls El Segundo home, the Los Angeles Kings. We're so proud that our favorite hometown team brought Lord Stanley's Cup back to El Segundo a second time, and you'll be hearing more about them in a few minutes. In addition to our champion kings, we're delighted that a few of our premier companies are here today to share what they find most attractive about doing business in El Segundo, and thank you for being here. We appreciate our business partners and strive to be the most business-friendly city in Southern California. As you may know, El Segundo was just named a Los Angeles Economic Development Corporation Eddie Award finalist. The Eddie is Los Angeles County's award for the most business-friendly city. Out of 88 cities, El Segundo was recognized for its commitment to business when we won the inaugural Eddie in 2006. Well, 
we're back. And like the Los Angeles Kings, we're dedicated to bringing that trophy back to El Segundo this year. So on behalf of the City Council, the employees, and the businesses of El Segundo, I thank you all for sharing, for attending and sharing our passion for El Segundo, truly the city where big ideas take off. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Fuentes. Incredible stuff. I love the 100 by 2017. And we've been working with the city to figure out the best ways to actually track that so we can look at our activities and, and determine how we're actually driving results. So some of you have been to Smoky Hollow recently. Very exciting what's going on there. My wife and I just bought a business there about a year ago, our property. Everywhere you look in Smoky Hollow, it's being re, kind of re-engineered, retooled, re-innovated. And the next company that's going to come up and speak, Brent of Beyond Meats, has taken an incredible space, and I haven't been in there yet, haven't, so I'm hoping that I can, you know, come by maybe later today or something, check it out. <laughs> but uh, they're doing just that. They're taking an older building and they're reinventing it, and they've got an incredible company, and they chose Smoky Hollow as their place. So I'm going to welcome up Brent Taylor of Beyond Meats. Thank you for being here. Morning, everyone. Uh, th thank you so much for to the city of El Segundo and everyone for, for attending this morning. I, it is a real exciting milestone for, for Beyond Meat and, and for the city as well. Um, it, just uh, to quickly rewind, uh, who, who and what is Beyond Meat? Uh, Beyond Meat is, is a company that makes meat from plants. Really, our, our core mission as a, as a business is to perfectly replace animal protein with plant protein but using mass market solutions to do so. The company was founded in 2009 slash 2010, and today we can be found in nearly 6,000 grocers across the country, ranging from Target to Safeway to Vons, Whole Foods, Sprouts, Publix, et cetera. We have several products in the marketplace today, uh, including plant-based chicken products and plant-based beef products. We're, we're typically merchandised in the frozen section of the grocery store and really, we want to create the experience of eating meat, the texture, the appearance, and cooking performance of cooking meat. As a business, we've been really fortunate enough to, uh, to attract high-class investors ranging from Bill Gates to the founders of Twitter and Biz Stone and Evan Williams to the Humane Society, <coughs> to the Pritzker family in Chicago, amongst many others. So really, as a business, we want to fundamentally change how the world consumes meat. And to think about meat, not only purely from the animal, but from plants and other sources. And we're hoping to truly define how protein is consumed, and it all starts here in El Segundo. Back in 2011, we started considering places where we wanted to place Beyond Meat. And really, we looked at various states ranging from Louisiana, North and South Carolina, to Nevada, to even Northern California, so I consider this a separate state. No, uh, but, uh, but anyhow, it, you know, being, being from the South Bay, from Manhattan Beach originally, but it, we, we really took a, a national perspective in how, where we wanted to place the business. And it, the, the answer for us was, was very easy. Um, El Segundo is such a business-friendly city, and you know, we always knew that it had the mo one of the most friendly business environments nationally, if you look at all the banners and buildings around here, um, it, it was uh, a real draw point for us. And we, we started our business here actually in Pacific Corporate Towers in the spring of 2012. So thanks to the, the PCT team, we really appreciate it. And uh, this last year we moved into a, a, a renovated uh, uniform factory right there on, on Main Street. We uh, took it over and blew out all the old dressing rooms and everything and we restored a lot of the brick in there. And so it, it is absolutely awesome. And I really welcome any people to, anyone to visit our, our offices there. And unlike any other meat company, we really want to open our doors. And so really try to bring greater, greater transparency to, to meat production and making people feel good about the meats in which they, they consume. So, so again, it all starts here uh, on Main Street in, in El Segundo. So, so the things that we love about El Segundo, um, a lot of our meetings are actually conducted outside in coffee shops and parks, et cetera. We're only a few blocks from the beach, so a lot of our employees, including myself, bike to, bike to work. And ultimately, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just such a quaint environment. And, and at the same time, there's such big ideas that are being circulated here within the confines of the city. 
So we are really, really optimistic about the growth of, of Beyond Meat um, in, in El Segundo. And uh, again, thank, thank you to everyone for, for all the welcome um, arms that, that we've had in, in starting our business here. Uh, I, I'd like to personally thank Ted Shove um, and, and Greg and everyone in, 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 the, in the city because it really facilitated our process for establishing our business here. You know, any sort of questions we had, Ted was able to address those for us. So why deal with the traffic in Venice, Santa Monica, et cetera? We're close to the airport. It was a, a no-brainer decision, and uh, I'm just happy to be here. So I really welcome you to stop by at 111 Main Street. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, next up we've got Jeff Ward. He is the Vice President of Product Development for Millennium Space Systems. Millennium Space Systems, Space Systems excuse me, works with satellites and a whole bunch of stuff that I can't even pretend to understand. But they also have an incredible, I just learned this actually when uh, PCA was in their videotaping, they've actually got an incubator program going on. And I don't know if I'm stealing some thunder here, but really excited what's going on at Millennium. And I want to thank you for being here and welcome you up to speak. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Before, before I get into what Millennium Space Systems and give you an idea of the way that we're going to try to contribute to 100 companies by 2017, I'd like to just give an anecdote of how I was introduced to El Segundo and it picks up something that Brett said. I flew into El Segundo from London in February, and London in February is miserable. And coming out in the airport, I already felt like I was on vacation and I was there for a job interview. And I said to the guy who interviewed me, I said, on a day like this, when the sun is out, in England, people wouldn't even come to work. And he said, in El Segundo, it's just another Thursday. And it went on from there. I went down into the town to look at houses, and there were kids that had a lemonade stand out. And I was convinced that the city council had paid them to put it out there. And I, and I looked at somebody's house, and the guy came out of his house, asked me what I was doing, and then invited me in and showed me his house. So since then, I've always had the impression of El Segundo being a uh, small town America that just happens to have a lot of big innovative aerospace companies and excellent surfing. So what, what could be better than that? And regarding Millennium Space Systems, I think the way to capture it is our, our recent advertising pitch that we put on some college documentation was Millennium Space Systems builds awesome spaceships. So what we do is provide satellites for some very exacting U.S. government, military, and security customers. But the surprising thing is that when you come to our facility, it looks more like a Silicon Valley facility. It's, you come in, it's a big, beautiful space full of light and color. We've got all of our desks on wheels, so our engineers are gathered in little clusters as necessary to, to do the work that they're doing. And they're you know, wearing jeans and t-shirts and brainstorming rather than sitting in cubicles and, you know, passing paper around. In spite of that, and in spite of the fact that there are only 80 of us, we actually do build satellites there. So we bring in raw materials and electronic components and push out spacecraft that we sell to our customers. We also do uh, space vehicle integration, space vehicle operations, all from this, from this facility. And our team includes, you know, roboticists and machine vision experts working alongside aerospace people, and a lot of 25 and 30 year old veteran, 30 year industry veterans working alongside 25 and 30 year old kids and, and interns. In fact, this year, more than 10% of our staff during the summer was made up of college interns. We brought in, we, we woke up one morning and said, we need to have a bunch of interns. We looked around the, the local colleges, come up with 10 kids who've come in and done, done things, including building a, a giant, limp robot in some of the extra space that we have in the back of our facility. So it's been great for us. Uh, we're a relative newcomer to El Segundo. Uh, we created and built and finished our facility at the end of last year and the beginning of this year. And I'd like to thank the city for helping make that possible for us to do that within four months. We took basically a, an existing logistics facility, got it emptied out, detonated all the walls and built back up into a real state-of-the-art engineering design facility that includes clean rooms and secure facilities and everything that we needed. And all of that building was done between November and February. So uh, we were very impressed by the welcome that we got. And for us, the choice of facilities, we had a number of facilities we were looking for in looking at in the, the South Bay because a lot of our 
founders and other workers are in this area, and we had we were already located in the area but needed a bigger facility. In the end, I, I think that the geography of the facility we chose has been one of the real highlights for us. We are across the street from the Air Force Base and from Space and Missile Command, which is one of our big customers. We're diagonally across the street from Aerospace Corporation, who's our customer's advisor. So we've sort of fulfilled the maximum of keeping your customers close and customers' advisors even closer, which is working out really well for us. And also, as a surprise to us, we have found that it's a great billboard for attracting new people. People coming from the 105 or from LAX can't really get anywhere without passing our building. And we've already hired a handful of engineers who saw our site, looked at us on the internet, stepped in, interviewed, and, and took jobs. So uh, I think one of the things about El Segundo is that it really is central for this industry and for other high-tech industries in a way that you can capitalize on effectively and, and quite rapidly just by painting your building and putting out a sign that says, we're cool. You know? <laughs> um, we have a couple of programs that I wanted to mention briefly that really dovetail with what the city's trying to do now in encouraging new businesses to come, to come through. We have a program called Bootstrap, uh, which is a, a little bit into our main line business. The idea behind Bootstrap, which was launched in August, is to identify and kickstart new space systems businesses that can take advantage of a disruptive satellite platform called Altair that we've developed uh, in recent years. And the Altair satellite platform allows businesses to have a satellite in space that only costs them $500,000 and to get that satellite in less than six months. And that enables a whole new class of businesses to consider using space than would otherwise do so. And so our bootstrap program is to try to identify those businesses, help them complete their technical planning, help them complete their business planning, and then get launched and get in space, ideally in under a year, so that you can really capitalize on whatever market you're trying to attack, and also the fact that if you look at the news, space and commercial space are getting a lot of interest right now. It's a good time. The, the iron is hot, and it's time for these businesses to get started. The other thing that we're working on is uh, in the nascent phases, not completely finalized, which uh, was mentioned a little bit earlier, which is an incubator or a, a, what do they call it, accelerator program. So somewhere between an incubator and accelerator, and the idea is to really create a high-tech workspace. Our new facility has something like 80,000 square feet, and our old facility had less than 10. So we have a bit of extra space, at least for a couple of years, and we're trying to turn that into a maker space, space for offices, and where we can provide mentoring, both technical and business, to new entrepreneurs who might just have their idea, or maybe they have a Kickstarter campaign, or maybe they have nothing and have just come out of a business school brainstorming session. And over the next couple of months, we're going to be solidifying that idea, putting a brand on it, and starting to cycle some uh, customers through it, and figure out how we can help them create businesses and how they can ultimately make money for us, because it doesn't make too much sense if we're not making money. So I think that ties in excellently. I would hope that we could contribute 10% to the 100 by 2017. I would really think what my boss will definitely give me a target like that. He might want to create 20% of those businesses <laughs> over that amount of time because we're a pretty aggressive company when it comes to these kind of ideas. And El Segundo, our facility and our capture is really helping us to do that. So El Segundo has been an excellent fit for us. Uh, I want to thank you for the welcome that we've already got from the city. And I think if we watch this space, we'll see some great things. People want to come by and, and see our facility, stick your head in and see what it looks like. It's worth it. It also shows up on the website pretty clearly as well. So, thanks very much. Thank you, Jeff Ward. So, uh, Ted, did you get that down? 20 new companies, Millennium Space Systems. We're going to put you on the list there, Jeff. Okay, our next speaker comes highly recommended from Mayor Fuentes. Very accomplished career, really excited to have Kevin Mitchell joining us from Northrop Grumman. He is the Vice President of Manufacturing. Kevin, come on up, please. Thank you. How's everybody doing today? Great. Great. You know, I'd like to spend a few minutes uh, first. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for allowing us to participate today. It's really, really inspiring to hear the other corporations who are here today. Uh, sharing some of their good benefits of being here in El Segundo. So just to give you a backdrop in what we believe is uh, good for us as a corporation. And we are, yes, a Fortune 500 corporation. And, and we really enjoy working here. We've been here approximately around 35 years in El Segundo. 
And we build some products that I think I'm very proud of, not think, I know I'm very proud of. One is the F-18 Super Hornet, which is probably one of the most dominant uh, fighters that we have in our uh, military fleet today, and actually is doing service today in some of the wars abroad. And when you look at the product and the gratification we get for that product that we build in our facility, it really, when you look at the home of it, it started right here in El Segundo, and it's still here in El Segundo, with many different variants going from what we call the A variant all the way to the G variant, which gives us a lot of history and legacy with that program that we developed here at this site. And then we're also proud to say that with that capability, we're able to launch a new capability, which is the next generation of uh, fighters. And the F-35, which is the next uh, generation of fighters that is built, uh, the composite part of that is here in this facility here in El Segundo as well. So having the capability to be able to build that type of legacy product, as well as the new products, it starts with a foundation of good resources that you get within a community like we have here in El Segundo. And when you look at it, it's very rich with a lot of capability and talent. And I was very inspired to have uh, communication and also collaborations with our local school district at the K-12 levels going all the way up to have them invest in the STEM programs. And the STEM programs to get that innovative thought at a young age to all the different kids that are out there to let them know that they're great corporations like Northrop Grumman that's providing great career for them in our corporation. So when I look at the El Segundo site, around 3,000 people that we have at our site, and the 3,000 people are just really type of people, and we talked about the things that I could talk about. The things that I can't talk about, there's innovation that are sometimes considered innovation, but are many times conventions. Things that are beyond the capabilities that thought of most people. And we get that capability in our facilities to be able to do that based on the resource of critical skills that we get out of here. And then also the good relationships we have with the city. And I don't think we can really overemphasize how important to have a city that is very responsive. So when we want to make modifications, building the building or doing something different to our facilities, I don't have to wait in a long line. I have to wait really months to get things accomplished. It's very quick. And that responsiveness allows us to be competitive in new pursuits that we have. So really appreciate Dylan and here at El Segundo being able to accomplish those missions. And then also, when you look at the, uh, the mayor, he got his good lover. Uh, she does a great job for us uh, as a corporation, and also she does a great job for the city. And we really, really, Northrop Grumman, is very happy to be here. And thank you, all of you, for allowing us to be able to speak here for you today. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. And so I, I've heard a theme now with uh, Kevin and Jeff, which is the just the pool of talent. And one of the stats that we heard, I don't know if we've totally validated this yet, but something like 800 plus PhDs in the area. Pretty amazing if you think about it. That might even be El Segundo. So that's an incredible talent pool to, um, to pull from. All right, next up we have Rod Spackman. Rod is the Manager of Government and Public Affairs for Chevron. As I mentioned earlier, Chevron has been an instrumental partner to the city of El Segundo. They practically built this town as Standard Oil in 1917, so we're going to welcome up Rod. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks, Drew. Um, I, didn't, uh, I didn't make a lot of prepared remarks today, in part because I wanted to keep this re relatively simple. Chevron has had a wonderful relationship with this community for a long, long time. Some of you will know that, you'll understand it, you'll have lived through a lot of it, frankly. Some of you will not. But in, but in any circumstance, part of what makes a community is how we collectively ensure the success of the community. Whether it's, in our case, through our investment in education, uh, the other things that we do to try and be part of that process, but today, we're, we're kicking off a, another chapter in this community, and that is creating a business development environment to help ensure the success of this community well into the future. And that's what made us uh, very much a part of this community over 100 years ago, was the idea that we could come and build and, and flourish and, and have an employment center for a number of people who can then contribute to the communities in which they live. And today, so we're doing that again. And I'm, I'm very pleased to be here representing Chevron because of that unique relationship that we've had, frankly, for a long time. And one that we are very proud of. And I say that often, but I, I mean it when I say it because I've had a chance to be very much in the forefront of that relationship for a little longer than we'll care to discuss. But. <laughs> so uh, today, I just want to congratulate the city, congratulate their partners, 
the Economic Development Committee or Commission, however you guys can describe yourselves, um, and, and say how much we like the opportunity to be part of the process to invest in what you're doing. And we did a little of that early on, and we're going to do some more, because at the end of the day, we're kicking off something that's going to hopefully turn into this successful challenge that the mayor uh, represented here, putting together 100 new businesses or bringing 100 new businesses to this community by 2017. We want to make sure that we can help continue to invigorate that process. Uh, we talked recently with the city today. So in addition to our initial support for the program, we're going to throw in another 175 grand, I think, uh, this year sometime. So we're looking forward. We're looking forward to be a good representative of everything that makes El Segundo a great community, a place to do business, to be part of, to be socially responsible to. Because at the end of the day, that's what all businesses have to do as part of their culture, is be responsible and give back to the, uh, the place that they make their, uh, their living. So thank you. Thanks for inviting us to join you today. Wow, that's good news. Um, thank you very much. That's incredible. And I don't know if you know this, but Chevron was a big part of why we've been able to do this incredible outreach program that Pialucci Communication Arts has been, has been driving for us. It's a very generous grant. So thank you very much again. All right. Uh, next up, very exciting time here. We've got, as I mentioned earlier, and Suzanne talked about the Champion of Business Award. We're going to commemorate it today. So in doing so, I'd like to ask Greg Carpenter, the city manager, and Ted Shove, the economic development analyst, to come up and uh, take care of that for us, please. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for attending. Um, like any humble host, we haven't thanked our MC yet, uh, Drew Boyles, for his, his dedication. <laughs> if, if it's not clear, this is all volunteer work on Drew's part, and his, his passion for the city his passion for making the city a better place to do business uh, and to live. And uh, it's a pleasure, being a, being a native of El Segundo, it truly is a privilege to be the city manager. And on, on top of that, it's a privilege to be asked to announce the 2014 Champion of Business Award. So what is this award about? It's about taking the city taking time each year to recognize uh, one of our great business partners for some achievement in, in their industry and to thank them for the positive recognition and the benefit that their achievement brings back to the city of El Segundo. The, uh, the LA Kings certainly are the champions of their sport. They, they achieved that by obviously winning the Stanley Cup second time um, in recent years. And they're a great example of a big idea that took off. The big idea being to win the championship, taking off by going through a grueling regular season, by going through three seven-game playoff series. I think that's a, they're the first team to ever achieve that. Uh, beating two of our in-state rivals and the, and the Chicago Blackhawks during that process. Then finally beating the New York Rangers in the, in the Stanley Cup final and bringing the Stanley Cup back to El Segundo. A little bit about the award itself. I believe it's... This, this really is an example, I think, um, of what's going on in El Segundo. If you can't tell, this is um, a piece of functional art that's been developed by one of our El Segundo companies, Moto Art. It's a 1940 piston from a biplane. And it's, it's actually in its, its original box. It's, it's never flown, but it's been converted by this company into, a, into an award and a clock. And I think it's representative of what's going on in El Segundo right now. Our industrial past transitioning and becoming a more creative and uh, innovative future. Uh, accepting the award, the award on behalf of the LA Kings is uh, Kings Great, uh, one of the voices of the Kings, and somebody that spends an awful lot of time with youth sports here in our community, Daryl Evans. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you. Uh, it's truly an honor and a privilege to be here today to represent a great organization in the Los Angeles Kings. And I know a lot of times that uh, people in the sporting world, sporting industry, they get recognized for the things that they achieve. And uh, not to say that we're not very grateful for that, but when I look at this room, uh, the genius ideas and all the corporations here, the success that they've had, again, uh, thank you for all you do. And I know sometimes it, 
doesn't get the, the attention that what we do in sports draws, but uh, from an athletic standpoint, uh, we really appreciate all that, you, all that you have done. When we opened up uh, our uh, training facility here back in 1999, Mayor, the late Mayor Mike Gordon, uh, he and I worked quite closely, and he shared with me his vision of what he saw happening in El Segundo. And I look out, and all I see is you know empty spaces and things like that. There's a lot of area, but his vision uh, became real true uh, and very easy to believe right off the bat as I started to see things grow. And uh, we've been very fortunate. Uh, we we really have a, a lot of gratitude for the hospitality that the city of El Segundo was showing to us because we have. 30 NHL teams or 29 other NHL teams that come to El Segundo and when they come here they feel very comfortable in coming here the hospitality they get when they go out in the community everything is very safe everybody reaches out towards them and not just from the fact that you know they're playing here or playing hockey here or coming to play the Los Angeles Kings so thank you to everybody for that uh, I know our families the kids that we draft from all across the world are very grateful as well they come in their families come in first time maybe being in the United States first time maybe in California and we do a great job at being able to show them what we have here. So again, to all the businesses, the hotels that accommodate them, the eateries that they share with, and all the other businesses, uh, a great job at helping them feel part of our big family. But, you know, again, I go back to talking about uh, the late mayor, Mike Gordon, and uh, his vision. And, you know, we talked about the training facility, and one of the first things that he did was introduce me to a lot of the corporations here. And, and it was great to be able to bring people in. We were very proud of what we had just put here in El Segundo. And, then when the businesses started to come and a lot of people weren't too familiar with what was going on in hockey, uh, we were able to share that with them, give them tours of the locker room, invite them down to games. Unfortunately, uh, the freedom of the tickets isn't quite as, uh, as it used to be back 15 years ago. Uh, there's a lot more demand today because of what the team has achieved. But uh, that, that was a real special part for me because I opened the facility up as a general manager to give me an opportunity to be able to get into the community and get to know a lot of the people and a lot of the corporations that were here. Way back when I played back in the early 80s, I was actually a resident of El Segundo. I lived over on Acacia. Uh, and then we've had other players, uh, players like Jay Wells, Bernie Nichols, and that that have lived in this area as well. We've had some recent players that have stayed here, some of our trainers as well. So it's been great. And I know the Kings, from a standpoint, when they selected El Segundo, there's a, a couple of reasons that they did it. Uh, logistically, where everything was with regards to the airport. I know the trainers were probably the ones that probably first were, were the ones that were so grateful and thankful for it because they used to have to drive out to the valley and it was probably about three hours on the road every day. But now when we come off the road, our charter's over here, bang, bang, we're in and off the plane, we're home within 10 minutes, the trainers are unloaded, they're in bed before they'd even get off the road before from having to drive in the valley. So those guys really appreciate that. And you know, we look at uh, you know, what the law enforcement, the fire department, all the support that we've gotten from everybody, anytime we've ever needed anything, it's been great. We've tried to reciprocate by getting coming up to the businesses and speak. I know I've done a lot of uh, talking with the Rotary over the years and being able to meet a lot of great people. And uh, again, I'd like to welcome everybody to come over to our facility. And if at any given time you'd like to take a tour, uh, we've just gone through a huge renovation over there. We're very proud of uh, what, we, what we've accomplished on the ice. But uh, we've created a world-class facility. Uh, the facility that we have here in El Segundo, I travel with the team in Los Angeles, the Kings. And we go to all the practice facilities around the country in different parts of the world. And we do have a world-class facility here, and we're, we're very proud of that. So anybody that would like to come by sometime, we've redone our, uh, rebuilt our locker room, and uh, we have a new uh, weight facility and all that. should be open uh, and ready to go in about a month or so. But I, I'd like to invite anybody that would like to come and, uh, you know, kind of stick our chest out a little bit and show you what we've done over there. And I know the other professional teams here, you know, there's not too often that you get... In a, especially in a small area like this where you have as many professional teams. You look at, this is an area here, ourselves, Los Angeles Lakers, world, you know, world class organization, the Sparks, the Raiders used to practice here. So this is a, a, very, uh, a very good area, a very uh, luring area to be able to come to logistically. And I think more importantly, what everybody has done here as a community, the way that they've come out and embraced us as our organization and, and other parts has been, uh, has been really good. So. Uh, again, continued success for everybody, the businesses uh, that are, are just coming on board. We've just celebrated our 15th anniversary here. We look forward to many more happy and healthy uh, growth years here in, in El Segundo. And uh, kind of the way we approach it on the ice, if you're standing still, you're going backwards. So the theme that you have here in El Segundo is a good thing. Everybody dream big and good luck to everybody. Thank you for this wonderful award. Thank you.